Welcome to Friendever the Podcast, the weekly podcast where we explore the highs and lows of friendship with your hosts, Danielle and Kayla. As we journey through life, our friendships often evolve and change, ebb and flow, and sometimes even come to an end. Danielle and I are lifelong advocates for the power of friendship, and we are here to guide all of us to the many challenges and joys that come with building and maintaining strong, meaningful connections with those around us. Join us each week as we deep dive into the intricacies of friendship, from navigating conflicts to fostering new relationships and everything in between. With insightful interviews, personal anecdotes, and expert advice, Friendever is the perfect podcast for anyone looking to strengthen their bonds with the people they love. So, whether you are on the go, taking care of chores, or just settling in, get ready to explore the world of friendship on Friendever, the podcast. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Friendever. I'm your host, Danielle. And I'm Kayla. Welcome back. And here we are, season two, episode two. And uh, I've had a pretty good week. How about you? Yeah. Um, school just started back up last week, so um, getting back in the swing of things. It's been fun. Me too. I So school started, or the kids come back on Thursday, so I got four more days, three more days. And then I, but I had to start like a week and a half ago to do teacher in service prep days. Mm-hmm. And there's just so much work. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much work. Yeah. Uh, and then of course, meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings. So, mm-hmm. but you know what? That was today and this is tonight and we're recording <laughs> at night and now it's time for friend ever. We're putting our lame work behind us and stepping into go. our passion uh, which is talking to you guys about friendship. And of course, if you ever have any questions or ideas for podcasts or comments on what we've said or anything like that, you can always shoot us an email at friendever podcast at gmail.com or you can DM us uh, at friendever. All right, let's dive into this week's episode. We are talking about the oh so positive and not at all depressing <laughs> topic of what is it, Kayla? Friendship destroyers. Friendship destroyers. That yeah. is kind of loaded and i want Mm -hmm. us to do it justice tonight because i don't want it to be like here's all the things that you are doing wrong right that's gonna end your friendships that's not the point it's a hey you might not need this now but keep it in your pocket for later right it's it's like oh i noticed this might be happening here's something i can do to fix it right and we have a list of a few things here that are friendship destroyers and a little disclaimer is that some of these things people can well-meaning people can do and they don't even realize it Preach. some of these things if you're doing it you are not well-meaning <laughs> yeah so uh and you'll be able to like tell the difference between these things so i'm excited to jump in yeah the emphasis on they might not even know that they're doing it yeah and of course we're going to talk about this as we do pretty much every episode about the role of communication but you cannot oh, here i am jumping ahead already you cannot get mad at someone for doing something that you would consider something that destroys your friendship if they don't even know that they did it. Right. So as yeah. we go through this, keep that kind of in the back of your mind as we're as we're going through. So first and foremost, we'll just go ahead and use communication as our first um, caveat of what a friendship destroyer might be is a lack of communications because mm-hmm. mis- misunderstandings and cl- conflicts arise when friends don't communicate. Right. I'm thinking of a situation, and I'm going to be very, very vague, because I don't want anybody to, you know, you know the drill, (laughs) where somebody was good friends with another person who ended up becoming entangled with somebody else in a relationship, and thusly forgetting the first friend in the process. That's like a super... That's your basic... It's your basic tales all the time. I'm sure... You can think, Kayla, you and listener, you can think of someone like, oh, yeah, I remember that happening to me. Or I remember when I was the person who forgot my other friend. Or I remember that happened to someone else. Or I was the person that was forgotten. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And, okay, think of it as a person who, say you were not the forgotten one, you're the one who did the forgetting. Did you even realize you were doing it? Right. Like, can you get all up in arms about people, quote unquote, forgetting you? Mm Mm-hmm. If they don't even know what they're doing or they don't perceive it that way. And so that's your job to say, hey, I know that you connect well with this person or I know that you're dating this person or I know mm-hmm. that, you know, whatever the situation may be. And I know that this is a new and special friendship to you, but I would love to make sure that we're still carving out time for each other. Yeah. How hard is that? Yeah. That is that is as open as you need to be. You don't have to be like, 
And this is how it makes me feel when you go to Starbucks with them instead of going to Starbucks <laughs> with me. You don't have to, like, open and honest communication, which is something we say all the time, does not have to be devastating and dramatic communication. Right. I feel like that sometimes is um, kind of taken out of context. It's just a matter of telling people, hey, this is how that made me feel. And can we work on that? Not can you work on that? Can we work on that? Right. Exactly. Communication. And it's not as hard, like you said. It's It doesn't have to be this big, dramatic event. It's really not as hard as you make it out to be. <laughs> and you know what's going to make it harder? Hmm. If you tell a third friend. Woo! And then they end up telling the person how you yeah. feel. Yeah. That is yep. drama city. That we could is do a like, whole episode on that. That is like theater <laughs> level drama ridiculousness. Like <laughs> <laughs> Your open and honest communication can start yeah. and end with friend B and not friend C. Mm -hmm. That is what causes the wild drama. But going back to that super vague situation like I was talking about, it was just a matter of the person felt abandoned. Was the other person's intent to abandon them? No, absolutely not. They're caught up in what's going on in their life currently. But the the friend who did the abandoning doesn't know that the friend feels that way. Mm Mm-hmm. So, this is very blunt, but either tell them how you feel or work through it on your own. There's no, like, you can't grovel in a woe is me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, that was, that happened a long time ago. And like I said, these situations happen all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, a tale as old as friendship. So, basically, when you find yourself, if you find yourself in that situation, whether you are the one who is abandoning or the one who feels abandoned... Communication will be the guide that will save your friendship instead of destroy your friendship. I've mm-hmm. never heard of anyone's friendship being destroyed over good communication. Right. But lack of communication or communicating with the wrong intention, mm-hmm. that will destroy it. Yep. All right. Another friendship destroyer that is misused a lot, but is still a very serious thing, is uh, betrayal. Mm-hmm. Betrayal of trust. When you lie about somebody, first of all, why? <laughs> to what end? Yeah. That is going to absolutely destroy a friendship. I'm not saying that you can't rebuild it, but it's going to take so long. And I don't, I personally yeah. don't think it ever gets back to the point where. Yeah. It can. Where you're completely trusting. Yeah. You're always going to have some kind of guard up. Yeah. And in the same vein. So, okay, I've had people lie about me. I think everyone has. But what's even worse is when that person has a history of lying to cover themselves, cover their own bases, and that they will literally, whenever they feel trapped in a corner, they'll just say anything about anyone to get themselves out of it. Right? Mm-hmm. Are oh, you not familiar with people who do that? <laughs> I'm you like, look shocked right now. I know. I'm, like, scared of this story. Well, I'm not going to tell the story. I mean, I okay. have a, a ton, but I'm not going to. I'm just saying that there are people who are like that. And so that's mm-hmm. part of, um, Kayla is nodding. I will have, you know, you can't see it, but she is nodding <laughs> Yes, right now. yes, yes. There, oh, absolutely. There are yeah. people like that. There are people who are like that. And I think one of the biggest lessons you learn growing up is navigating those types of people because you cannot yeah. trust them as much as you want to. No. And it takes yeah. one instance for you to realize that and damage is done in the process. This is a very serious podcast episode. Like I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to pretend like it's not. But the whole point of Friendever is if we could help even one person learn a lesson or learn lessons or just become a better person or a better friend, it'll be worth it. Right. And this is one of the hardest lessons you have to learn. Right. I had to learn it. Yeah. Kaylee, you had to learn it at some point. I don't know if everyone learns it in the same style or uh, in the same circumstance, but when people feel trapped, they will literally say anything. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are worse at it than others. And so to betray someone's trust, sometimes you just have to take your lumps. Not sometimes you should. Like if you backed yourself into a corner, you need to apologize and make it right. Instead yeah. of saying, blah, 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 and like, yeah. you know, point and blame and all that stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's going to destroy your friendship is if you betray trust. Um, right. We've used examples like last season about, oh, she did this. And so I'm so betrayed and blah, blah, blah. 
there are like elementary versions of this too. I'm talking about more like adult versions, not just, you know, marriage material, but just literally, I mean, I don't really know what else to say more than just people who will say anything, including harmful things about or to you to save themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like a, yeah, a natural reaction. It's like fight or flight, fight, flight or lie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And it's not every situation that demands that. Yeah. Uh, there are some. And if you know that it's coming, like, you don't have to put guards up. I'm not saying you need to throw walls up to protect yourself. But if you are just aware that this could happen, mm-hmm. you will be not quite as blindsided if it should happen to you. Right. And, I mean, <sighs> I guess this is the actual definition of, de- of judging. But <laughs> if you have heard stories about a person and you, like, know for a fact that they are that kind of person then maybe you do put your walls up before you even get close to them. Yeah. You know? And, yeah, like Danielle said, don't put your walls up for no reason for everybody ever. But, I mean, if you've heard things about someone from multiple reliable sources, then put walls up around them. And I like to use the imagery just for myself. I don't even know if I've ever talked about this on the podcast. Instead of walls, we talk about boundaries a lot. Use the fence analogy a fence mm-hmm. you can still communicate with someone through it you can still mm. smile at them through it you can mm. still even pass things over the fence to each other but when it comes down to uh you know throwing a verbal spear in your direction uh it's probably not going to get through the fence because you have that boundary already established i am posting that on instagram tomorrow yeah. tomorrow <laughs> well you guys are going to know when we record because that's going up tomorrow <laughs> but like a wall and I'm not a therapist, but my mom is, and I hear a lot about, you know, the studies that she has, and not her cases, but her the studies that she did to mm-hmm. prepare for that. And I just think, like, walls are meant to protect you from, from getting emotionally hurt or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think fences just help you, you know, keep a, a safe boundary without I shutting yourself that. off from the world. Because you're I not going to ever get to the point where you're not hurt. Mm-hmm. If you put up walls, you're hurting yourself. Yeah, but exactly. if you have no boundary, then you're just opening up for the whole world to hurt you. So do it safely, and make it to the point where, like, because you're never going to be an island, mm-hmm. you know, at least you shouldn't be. So do it safely and respectfully for you and the other people, so that you can have like some semblance of human connection and, and balance with that person. Yeah, but that you're not going to allow them to throw things at you, throw and, things yeah. at you, overrun you, mm-hmm. dictate who you are, dictate who can come into your life if you have no boundary Mm -hmm. that person can come and go as they please and bring whomever they want into Mm. your life yeah so you think of a fence maybe next time you're thinking of like oh i'm not gonna have anything to do with that person anymore instead of throwing up that wall throw up a a fence to Mm -hmm. see if that helps keep some of the things at bay so good yeah all right number three on our friendships destroyers list is constant criticism Mm -hmm. this is not just going to destroy your friendship it's going to destroy any relationship how many marriages have you heard of of the nagging wife or Mm -hmm. the controlling husband criticism you did this wrong my food was cold or my house is not clean or you don't make enough money or Mm -hmm. nag 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 criticize 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 that happens it can happen if you allow it to you know take you take over your your relationship um but consecrate negative comments and that criticism can make a friend feel, at at the at, you know the best, unappreciated, right, undervalued. Like at right. the worst, it, it will literally destroy your friendship. You mm-hmm. no one wants to be around that. And yeah. if they do, I don't think they want to. But if they don't know how to get out of it, just because of you know the way they were raised, perhaps they were raised in a house that was like that, and so that that's all they know. That's not healthy, yeah. right? And even. I mean, yeah, big criticisms can make you feel undervalued or underappreciated. But even, like, little criticisms that just hurt or it's like, "Mm, like, that was me. Where did that come from? Yeah. (laughs) What did I do to, yeah. Like, little things. Like I said, well-meaning people. I had a friend, uh, this was, I don't know, a little over a year ago now. But um, when slick back buns, like, just started becoming popular, 
I guess it's been a few years, huh? Popular again. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> because 05 does have a chokehold on me. <laughs> oh, I mean, they were okay, really yeah. popular because everyone had the huge hair then, but it was like either a slick back or a huge hair. There was no in between. Yes. So, yeah, since they've made a comeback within like the past few years, I started doing them, but I did not have a smoothing brush. I just used my um, regular brush to make a slick back. But you like you can't achieve the look that way right. you have to have like a bristle brush anyway so <laughs> i was doing it that way for a while um then i got a bristle brush and i started smoothing it that way and i told my friend um do you like my hair i started using a bristle brush and she goes um oh my goodness it looks so good and now um you don't have any more big old bumps in your hair <laughs> Well-meaning, well-meaning, but, like, I had been doing my hair like that for, like, over a year. That is so <laughs> unnecessary. And I had never complained to this friend about, about bumps, bumps in my hair. She just took it upon herself to notice. Right! <laughs> so there's a little tip. If y- your friend has never complained to you about something, yeah. maybe don't bring it up. Maybe it doesn't bother them. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a rule of thumb that I thought was excellent. Don't point out any flaw about someone that they can't fix in 10 seconds or less that's so like, good yeah if you say hey you got something in your teeth discreetly and quietly not in front of people oh my gosh you have something black in your teeth <laughs> not like that right something just like for their benefit then that would that's a help like hey you're you got a flyaway right here or mm-hmm. you know or uh your glasses are crooked something that they can that's fix good. that's Ten gonna help them less. in the moment if yeah. they have a blemish on their face um, you have something, a big red mark on your chin. Right. Thanks. <laughs> right. Like, Glass, what? Glasses? How are you? <laughs> thank you for that. Like, what? <laughs> right. Good to know. Oh, your shoes are broken. Okay. Yes, yeah, the strap can, like, much. Go I can't home and change them. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fix that. Right. So criticism, even if it seems like you're being helpful, mm-hmm. take deep stock of what you're saying and if you realize in the moment that you misspoke and you're like that's because your friend whoever said about your bumps Mm -hmm. she was like trying to rejoice with you right kind of you know she's like oh now you don't have that anymore but also i wasn't aware that i had big old bumps (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh it's so awful (laughs) so it's like if you realize in the moment you're like but you still looked good you know, yeah. but now you don't have, like, now you're able, you yeah, can, yeah. you can slowly pry the foot out of your mouth after you stick it in. If you realize that you stuck it in, Uh huh. you know, um, there is a point of no return. <laughs> there is a point. And sometimes when you try to, you just end up shoving it deeper Ooh. down your throat. But regardless, criticism, e- even if it's so small things, like what if your friend was not saying that in a, in a like a yay way, cause mm-hmm. she was, but if she wasn't. Yeah. Like, oh, good, you don't have those bumps in your hair anymore. And then the next there is, oh, good, you got an iron, so you won't have those wrinkles in your clothes anymore. Or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. So these, like, seemingly incons- in- insignificant co- uh, criticisms kind of build up over- after a while. Mm-hmm. That is when I'd be like, okay, goodbye. Yeah. I, I can't, I don't want to be around that. My grandma, may she rest in peace, was one of the most negative people I'd ever met. But the funniest <laughs> thing was... She would constantly tell us that she hated being around negativity. <laughs> she was, oh, I hate being around negative people. I hate it. I hate it. If my mom was in here right now, she would be completely agreeing with me. And I love my grandma. I love, I love her. But it was so hilarious. And Brett and Karen, I would be like, mm, yeah, negative people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, they really dragged out a room, right? Oh, yeah. They dragged out a room. <laughs> so... You just said that on Friend Ever the Podcast. I did. <sighs> she is known for that. But you know what? She was still a good grandma. <laughs> Anyways, but her negativity was, it was the lack of self-awareness because she was like, I hate being around negative people. <laughs> so if you truly don't like being around negative people, take stock in yourself. Make sure that you're not contributing to that sort of environment. Mm-hmm. And if you are on the receptive end of criticism, that's where you can drop in that communication. Now... Kayla, I don't think you bust out your friend like, why did you say that about my bumps? You know, like right. that would be something very 11 year old would do or whatever. Mm-hmm. And at that age, it's that's when you do stuff like that. But um, 
the older you get, if the deeper the criticism, the more it affects your friendship, the more you have a license to talk about it. But yeah. hopefully your friend would not have that level of, yeah. of criticism over and over. <laughs> right. You know. Kind of in that same vein, a friendship destroyer is like general neglect mm-hmm. or lack of effort. I think from the very first episode, we may have said this, uh, friendship is a two-way street. Every relationship mm-hmm. is a two-way street and you have to have the give and you have to have the take. And if one person is giving and one person is taking, it's unsustainable. Yeah. Right. I, I can't, Im- like, I can't imagine if I just gave, 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 gave. Mm-hmm. And there are seasons, you know. Right. Where, like... Yeah, we might be having more sleepovers at my house during this season because your house, whatever. Um, or maybe you covered more meals this year because I'm, I have student loans. Or you watch whatever. Or kids for me more this year than I right. watched yours or something. Exactly. There are seasons, so we're not talking about that. Right. But it's like a general lack of reciprocity. Almost to the point of expectation. Yeah. Like if we go out to dinner or whatever we go to a show and one person's always picking up the parking tab mm. <laughs> and then you're like at the point you get to like well they always pay for the parking so i'm not even gonna do that yeah you know i'm mm-hmm. not gonna worry about that that's just a, a physical example but there's also emotional examples of like you're always being the shoulder that's getting cried on instead yes. of being able to release you know and in, in the other way yes um and neglect if you so we kind of lump these two together but neglect is you're giving your attention to other things or other people other than that friend and having a nice balance they can just feel unimportant Mm -hmm. like the example of the yo-yo that i i think we talked about yeah yeah of how the yo-yo snaps away from the hand which is like their anchor and they go out and do all the things and then when they're when they need help, when they need support, when they need an anchor, when they need something real, they come flying back to the hand until they can get, you know, all the encouragement and all the healing that they need from the hand and then shoot out again to another friendship and bounce around or whatever. Mm-hmm. The hand, if they're not emotionally mature, if they don't mm-hmm. know what's happening, oh, they can feel so much neglect. Yeah. And oftentimes in the younger years, if you are the hand, you will be hurt. Yeah. Because you don't understand. Why is this person ping ponging away from me constantly? Yeah. I'm right. I always love them. Every time they're come back to me, every time they're my friend, you know, my mm-hmm. friend. Yeah. I'm always there for them, but they always leave and they always become best friends with someone else. Well, part of maturing is realizing what your role is. You can be that person or you can cut them off. Yeah. Right. If you're emotionally stable and emotionally mature enough to handle being the hand, because some people need to be a hand, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and some people feel a responsibility yeah. for that person. Right. Uh, right. For various circumstances, but yeah. Yeah. It's not, I, it, I can't see how it would benefit you to be the hand, but it can be like a ministry. It could be. It, that is so true. Yeah. That's so true. Um, friendship is not often thought of as a ministry. And I think that your friends would be really offended if, if, you, right. if they thought you viewed them as a ministry. But in the, the yo-yo hand situation, that definitely could be viewed as ministry. Mm-hmm. And as long as you're not like letting yourself being taken advantage of to the point where you are being hurt in the process. Like if you're willing. <laughs> this is a ridiculous example, but I'm going to use it. They say go to the casino with how much money you're willing to lose. You're like, if you are willing to lose $1,000, okay, go with $1,000. You might end up more. But if you're okay with losing that much, that's how much you should take. They say that in, in like crypto investment too, right? Like only invest how much you're willing to lose. Right. If you never got it back. Exactly. Yeah. So you as the hand only give as much as you're willing to not affect you, mm-hmm. to not affect your real relationships to not affect your family. If you're a mom and you're a hand of of like an unstable friend, only give to the point where it's not going to affect your kids. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect your marriage. It's not going to affect the peace of your household. Don't give and give and give to the other, to the point where other things are affected. Yes. Only give as much as you're 
like the gambling thing, mm-hmm. willing to lose. Right. Um, but if you are that friend who's unstable and, and a little bit wacky sometimes, <laughs> think of how your lack of effort in the relationship is affecting the other person. Because mm-hmm. it's not just a hand yo-yo situation. That's That's a big example of it. But just a regular friendship, you know, two-way street. If you're like, hey, you know, I've kind of been slacking on my role, you know, and what I need to be a support for my friends. So I'm going to step up and and take responsibility of this friendship. It, you don't have to give yourself a time frame or anything like that. But just like, yeah, it's my turn to share the majority of the burden or the mm-hmm. load, if you will. All right. Number five, friendship destroyers. Okay, let's see if we can do a little word association game. Okay. If I say that competition would destroy a friendship, what is a corresponding word that comes to mind for you? Competition. I think the need to be competitive stems from jealousy. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. It absolutely can stem from jealousy or it can stem from them, um, you not wanting them to have more or to be more than you so Mm -hmm. envy and competitiveness can create resentment and tension that will completely undermine your friendship yeah if you if your friendship is built on a platform of competition and jealousy let's just Mm -hmm. start with competition thing for once for one first of all that's incredibly unstable Mm -hmm. there's only so much you're going to compete with within your means um if we talk physical things if you're like oh okay I have a, a Nissan, but they have a Ford. So, okay, I'm doing better than them. I don't know what if one of those cars <laughs> is better than the other. I drive a Ford, so I have no idea. But but then you get, and then the other person gets a BMW. Ugh. Okay, well, I got to get something in there. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm going to get a Lexus. And then you, like, first of all, you could be trying to compete with each other outside of your means, leading to other detrimental things in your life, mm-hmm. like debt and mm-hmm. issues like that. Yeah. But also, what kind of foundation is that? Especially if it's not something right. that you, um, not that you would talk about this, so I don't, don't even really know where I'm starting to go. But the underlying, like, what kind of relationship do you have on the surface if that's what's happening underneath? Yes. Right. <laughs> like, you right. can't have any depth. There's that. not, it's not a friendship. It's not it's a friendship. A, it's a, I don't know. <laughs> it's a it's friend a situation. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even, competition is not going to get you far. Now, yeah. if you're like, I, I, I would even, they say, oh, if there's healthy competition. Yeah. If you're like an athlete. Yeah. Right. Because if I you're can't playing ask, a game. <laughs> yeah. I can't see even quote unquote a healthy competition in a friendship because what's your competition? Who can get a better degree? Well, yeah, then right. someone's going to end up feeling less than like yeah. it, there's life no, isn't a game. Yeah. You should be encouraging each other and helping each other. And following your own pursuits, not because of what another person expects of you or that you're trying to beat another person. Right. That's no foundation on which to build a friendship. Mm -hmm. And we did an episode one time about jealousy and envy. Jealousy is um, fear of losing what you have. And envy is wanting what other people have. Uh, So when you see that your friend just got a new house, then you're so envious I want that. I want that. You're covet, you know, coveting it. Jealousy is not being willing to share your resources with a friend in need because you don't want to lose what you have. Yeah. So it's, it, it's not if any one of those words that I just threw out is not going to be a positive um, right. impact on your friendship. All right. This next one kind of goes hand in hand with the first one that we talked about which if you need a refresher was lack of communication. Um, and the next one is in inability to resolve conflict. So communication is an aspect of resolving conflict, but there's also um, being able to avoid conflict. You don't have, to, if you see you're heading for conflict, you can kind of gently steer away with it from it without. Yeah. And uh, I'll use your, your example that you gave with the, the hair and the bristles and the (laughs) bumps or whatever what if you had just like decided to take offense to that Mm -hmm. what if you decided to get so mad and tell your other friends and be like can you believe that you are driving head 
long into conflict mm-hmm. instead of taking for no reason. Yeah, just, just for no reason. Yeah. But you, being you know mature and having a sense of self, mm-hmm. were like, okay, <laughs> that was rude, yeah. but whatever. Well, there are people, and it's the intent behind it. Yeah, too. there are people who would choose and thrive on that kind of nonsense of like, oh yes, conflict is here. I'm gonna take it in front of this. <laughs> yeah. um, um, side note: a lot of those people tend to be the ones who will back themselves into a corner and say anything to get out of it. In my experience, but believe that as it is <laughs> anyway so you can choose to avoid conflict not just work through it like if you if you get to the point where you don't even have to have it um mm-hmm. then you won't have issues of bitterness mm. or you know no resolution yeah and then of course if a situation is mishandled talk about it get a third party like another friend not to pick sides but to mediate this is how I felt. This is how you felt. Blah, 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 you know, work through it. So I wanted to touch on that. Another friendship destroyer is disrespect for boundaries. If you and your friend have a super solid relationship and you guys are good to go and there's no issues, but one friend decides to bring another person in who you know does not share the same values. Obviously, I'm not saying bring them in to like your relationship there's not really any way to do that but spend more time with them go to certain places include Mm -hmm. them blah 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 if they are a person who does not share your same values and disrespects your boundaries that can lead to not just discomfort you know like obviously uncomfortable situations and frustration but the third person who's disrespecting the boundaries can be the destroyer of your friendship with the first person Mm, yeah it you can start to resent friend B yeah. because they brought that person yeah. in. They're responsible. Even though friend B would never disrespect your boundaries. Right. You guys are good to go. You are, you have an A-plus relationship. You guys mm-hmm. are friends for a long time. You have a firm foundation. Introducing a person who does not feel that way and spending significant time with them kind of like worms your way into the the main friendship. Yeah. Which... Uh, it's just, it's a destroyer. It's a friendship destroyer. Mm-hmm. You've got your classic dishonesty, lying, hiding the truth. You get that a lot in that betrayal aspect. That's going to erode your trust, lead to a breakdown in the relationship. And uh, lastly, this kind of touches on to the disrespect for boundaries one, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it, is negative influence. Mm-hmm. So we talked about the constant criticism. Being a negative influence, such as, when you know your friend is down, Kayla, if you came to me and said, I just, I'm just going to quit my job because I just, I hate it so much. Not that Kayla loves her job. But if she was, <laughs> if she came to me and I said, yeah, you need to do that. You mm-hmm. need to. I, if I encouraged this harmful act without helping her think through it and like just jumping on this train of negativity, mm. down the road, Kayla could resent me for giving her that advice or mm-hmm. for backing her up. In the right. moment, you think, well, I'm encouraging her. This is what she wants to do on in her and, corner. Yeah, support. But yeah, instead of it. having the clear mind of support that she needed in the moment mm-hmm. down the road, okay, now she's broke. And now she mm-hmm. is on the verge of losing her house or losing her car or whatever. And all I did, and then you got the, uh, the, the neglect. If I'm like, oh, well, you did this to yourself, you know, and mm-hmm. then I don't help you or whatever. <laughs> right. Definitely. <laughs> now this is a bit of an extreme, mm-hmm. but I just, I like to cover both ends of the spectrum because you never know what people are facing in their life. Mm-hmm. So if you find yourself in a situation where your friend is wanting to do everything from make bad decisions to do harmful behaviors or, or, or toxic environments or anything like pick any vice, any yeah. part of the spectrum. And if you are not helping your friend balance in their low moments or whatever moment they're in Mm -hmm. when push comes to shove and rubber meets the road down the line, they could hold you responsible. Yeah. Not saying that's fair, but I'm saying that it could happen. Mm -hmm. What, you know, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. Why did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, because they're not in a clear mind space at that time. If you just Mm -hmm. had a bad day at work and you came to me and you're like, I hate it. I hate it. I'm not going to invalidate how you feel. Right. I'm sure you yeah. do have a bad day. Right. But let's think big picture right now. Mm-hmm. How about you 
for the person who is in their right mind and who's able to think big picture. Exactly. How about you not quit your job right now? (laughs) Give yourself a little bit of time. First of all, things could turn around as soon as tomorrow. And in the meantime, look for other opportunities. Look for other jobs. If there's no other jobs, look for certifications that are going to help you get another job. That's just one example. But to be that clear mind for your friend um, in times of negativity will be such a help. Mm -hmm. Not only will it not destroy your friendship, it will prevent them from doing something that could eventually harm themselves. Right. So the whole point of this episode was not to make you feel like, oh, wow. You have to go cut everyone off. Yes, or dangers are lurking lurking around every (laughs) corner and destruction is sure to come. That's not the point. The yeah. point is, is that if you notice any patterns in these behaviors, like I said, stick it in your pocket, use it for later, come back to this episode, take notes, whatever. Be aware. Mm-hmm. Read your Bible. There's nothing new under the sun. I think it was Solomon who said that there's nothing mm-hmm. new under the sun. So the mm. things that you have experienced, your mentors have probably experienced. Yeah. Kayla and I have experienced a majority of these things we've talked about. Oh, yeah. Talk to the people in your life that are important to you, that are mentors, your pastor, your youth leader, your parents, your spouse, your your friends. And say, hey, this is something that I'm experiencing. And I know that this could be a friendship destroyer. Yeah. I heard it on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, just yeah. like, just be aware. Because mm-hmm. you want to have healthy relationships. You want to keep a boundary, a protection, a fence. Yeah. In to to make sure that you have long, healthy, sustained friendships. Yeah. So just something to be aware of. Yes. Um, I think it was last week after we were done recording, I told you that I had just listened to this podcast, not a podcast, an Adventures in Odyssey episode about Connie. Yes. About Connie hosting the kids radio show and her topic was friendship. And she was telling this girl um, basically to cut her friendship off. Because there was like toxic behaviors. And so a guy called in and he goes, you know, cutting people off is a luxury. Like not everyone has so many options where they can just cut people off and you're giving the wrong advice. Right. And so I talked to Danielle about that and I was like, what do you think about that? Do you think we sound like that sometimes? But Danielle said, I mean, you can go ahead and like tell them what you said. But basically, like luxury or not, it doesn't matter how many friends you have. You don't deserve a toxic friendship, yeah. even if it's your one and only option. No friendship is better than a toxic one. Yeah. And I, I obviously it's Odyssey, so it's fake, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it shows real life. I don't think that guy was making a bad point. I think mm-hmm. that it was just too extreme. Yes. Because if you are in the position where you are in a toxic relationship, it would literally temporarily be better for you to have no friends than to have one that is going to destroy you right right you can't get any friendships if you're destroyed Mm -hmm. you can't get any friendships if you're beaten down so so low that you can't trust anybody and so to to consider it a luxury to cut people off no Mm -hmm. god will make a way Mm -hmm. i i know of people who have prayed for friendships Mm -hmm. and he's made a way Uh, i feel like he is he has made the friendship possible that i have today moving when we did at the at the age that i was like what delight thyself also in the lord Mm -hmm. and he will give you the desires of your heart and all thy ways acknowledge him right Mm -hmm. so again we are doing that based off an odyssey (laughs) but it is you know can happen in real life so when you find yourself if you find yourself in a difficult situation you don't have to stay there just because you feel like you're not going to have anyone else Exactly. We had yep. a reader, or excuse me, a listener, write into us last year and tell us about how she was in a friendship with constant criticism. Mm-hmm. That was one of the aspects of it, is that there was constantly criticism, amongst other things, mm-hmm. betrayal and all that stuff. But we told her, <laughs> you don't <laughs> have to listen yeah. to that person, you know? Yeah. Even if you are feel like you're without friends for... A month or two pray about it mm-hmm. find other places of friendship you don't have to subject yourself to constant negativity criticism things that tear you down because right. if you take in all those emotions and you start believing those things 
well, then you're never going to be a healthy human being who can have good friendships. Right. When the time comes. Exactly. So that wraps up our season two, episode two, uh, Friendship Destroyers. If you think that we missed one, uh, go ahead and write to us because we yeah. might do a part two if things get bad enough in this world. Um, <laughs> if you yeah. think that one is not actually a destroyer and something that you can work through or a different way, please let us know. We'd love mm-hmm. to chat with you about it. Again, that email is friendeverpodcast at gmail.com. DM us, uh, tag us in a post if you if you share something you think we'd like or if you see something we think we'd like. Yeah, we love hearing from you guys. Yes. All right, we will see you next week on Friendever the Podcast. Have a great week. Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Friendever the Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you enjoyed today's content, leave a review and share with a friend. You can find the show notes on our website, www.friendever.net, and in the description of this episode. Friendship is a journey. It's an endeavor. We'll see you next time on Friendever.